Good evening, everyone. I wish you all a very happy Independence Day. I'm wish proud to same. be an Indian, and I hope you guys are also proud to be an Indian. So today, let us all pledge to save our heritage, promote our culture, be responsible towards nature, and respectful towards our communities. And that is exactly what we learned in our last session by Dr. Prabhu Chirwarkar. He gave us amazing information about archaeology and how we can connect our past to the present. He told us so much about ancient civilization, and we we are surprised that we have so much of information hidden in those past uh, artifacts that we it will probably last us for times immortal. He also inspired us to be curious, innovative, creative, and how to use our knowledge and skill for our personal and professional growth. And in today's session, we would like to take you into the world of opportunities that tourism has to offer us. Let us learn how we can create a sustainable world with better education and better tourism practices. And today, I have a dear friend of mine, Dr. Hemant Pisapati, who not only inspires his students about exploring the world, but also teaches them how to do it in a better and innovative way and in a responsible way. So please welcome Dr. Hemant Pisapati. Hello, all. Hello, Hemant. Hi. Hi, Dipti. Hi, Ankit. Yeah. Hi, Hemant. Hope you all are well. Yes. Yes. So, Hemant has done his bachelor's in hotel management and catering technology from Andhra Pradesh, now Telangana. He has done his MBA also from the same state. He has later done his master's in hospitality and tourism management from Sheffield Hallam University in UK. And also done his PhD in sustainable tourism systems from University of Florence in Italy. He has worked at several capacities in UK and India, and finally started his journey as an assistant professor from Italy itself. Also, while he was in Italy, he has presented his paper in First World's Agrotourism Congress with his topic on demand and supply of agrotourism in India. He has also been recognized by Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh for obtaining around 4,000 4, entrepreneurial ideas from natives and tribals as a part of Startup Chhattisgarh. Currently, he works as an assistant professor at State Institute of Hotel Management as well as the National Institute of Tourism and Hospitality in Hyderabad and is an active mentor for entrepreneurs, students, and spends most of his time grooming his students and turning them into a better industry individual. So let us welcome Heyman. Heyman. Thank you, Deepthi. Um, actually, I uh, yeah, I turn my students uh, to be well groomed. Yes. Now myself, I am not groomed because of uh, COVID. So I'm happy because of COVID. At least I can grow my hair for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah. So, Heyman, Anyhow, how was your, uh, yeah. So uh, my first question to you is that how did you start your journey into the educational field of tourism? So just tell us about your bachelor's degree, how you went to UK, how you went to Italy, and what was the whole experience uh, about? So tell us about something about the education as well as uh, the experiences that you had in this country. Deepthi, when I started my, like when I finished my bachelor's, I'm just 20. When I came to UK, I was 21. And I did my bridge course, as you know, in London College. Uh, like then I moved to uh, Flo uh, sorry, Sheffield Hallam University. I'm sorry, Florence is not going from my head. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Sheffield Hallam University is a wonderful place where I have chosen tourism and hospitality as my uh, topics. Yeah. And where you're my classmate uh, for some yes. of the classes yes. <laughs> in the tourism part. So uh, anyhow, like uh, over there, you know, like I used to work as well as study. I paid my fees, 9,500 pounds, which I have paid my hard earned money. <laughs> uh, so uh, till now, uh, yeah, I, I feel proud because yeah, I didn't took any, any single penny from my pay parents. Then I, I like after years, I came back because I want to start my business in India. I came back to India. I started my gaming zone and food court okay. in Vijayawada. Uh, so with uh, 11 other partners. So big cricket team. Uh, too many chefs spoiled the dish. So we all uh, together spoiled the dish. Uh, anyhow, that's a long story. Then I moved to 
uh, paradise group i used to be a pre operations uh, manager uh, so i used to open their new restaurants they, at that time they started uh, opening many restaurants uh, so i started my career in a different way then then i used to like i left the job because i met with an accident then i moved to global business incubators uh, so in this place i have got a chance to work with uh, innovations and uh, new technologies and new ideas basically students uh, who are studying their engineering and uh, degree mostly engineering students we used to then we got a chance to work with chatisgarh uh, which was a long project and we worked almost uh, Uh, six months with this project, and yeah, we were successful in getting new ideas. Then I left the company. I went back to you. Uh, I like I left to UK, sorry Europe, and I started my PhD over there. There I was uh, uh, studying and working together, and my professor helped me a lot. I used to work with my professor on the subject. of agri tourism and uh, he used to support us like without my professor's support i need to stay on the platform today uh, without uh, dr bendik to rokhi i'm not what i am he molded he he thought as uh, in a in a professional way and i should say he is a right teacher he is a right guru in my words i can say that and he is the right person who taught me and then the next right guru is mr pandranga thavre father of agri tourism and he is a lovely person whenever i call him whenever i ask him some information about india because i was uh, in europe and i am asking about india it's very tough you know nowadays we are very used to do this type of uh, google meets or uh, zoom meetings in those days we don't have anything like this and yeah that then also sir supported me and i saw for uh, for the first time only in the first international conference till that time we are on phone because yeah, yeah. i want to come because i want to come that time there was some disturbances locally and there was a big flood so i couldn't meet him personally at any time and for the first time i met him uh, and i, I should say uh, the teachers like i am very proud of my teachers because they taught me they taught me they spoon feeded feeded me i can say that so i learned this skill from my teachers who taught me and i am implementing same thing with my students now right. so yeah uh, and uh, part like now what uh, my opportunity is like i did my uh, uh, hospitality i did my uh, tourism as well as i studied management uh, wherein my main is marketing and uh, hr so i got a uh, complete package for my uh, univer- uh, college i can say for national institute of tourism so even my director over there he always give me chance my hod is they all always open they always give me a chance for new subjects new new uh, area so i even learn while teaching uh, from students also i i i grasp some new things you know everyone will have a good thing i l- i grasp one good thing from each each and every one like from deepthi i learned uh, how to be happy all the time it's not uh, exaggerating but uh, i'm true i know how many phases we went together yes. so yeah i learned from different people different things so, so even from my students i learn uh, even from my uh, faculty i learn i like instead of talking negativity we uh, i i encourage myself to talk positive what positiveness they have so we take positiveness from each and every person so that's what i teach my students even right. and uh, in tourism and hospitality yeah uh, both are my eyes tourism without tourism there is no hospitality without the uh, hospitality there is no tourism so yeah. both goes uh, simultaneously uh, it's like a track if one one track is missing then your train will uh, meet uh, with an ac- uh, accident so it's like it's always necessary to be uh, having both the tracks running in a si- same direction so yeah this is what deepthi okay thank you yeah. uh hemant it is very interesting to know that uh, you always started out with tourism as your first course and you have continued in the field even though with uh, other complementary courses that you have done 
and i think uh, that is uh, i think very different to what uh, me and deepthi have done like we switched from fields we did something else and then we eventually turned up in tourism so deepthi yeah, i like to know uh, how did your journey start and were you always set for tourism or did you do something else and come into tourism yes thank you aniket uh to say that yes i had always planned to join tourism uh, so during my 12th standard i had done enough research that what can be my career prospects so i was given two options of uh, one to join botany because that was again my interest in uh, nature uh, animals and uh, stuff and uh, there was another option probably based on my likings of traveling photography and being a people person that i can opt for tourism so there was a, a lot of market study there also that how it's to be done when it should be done so i decided i'll first go for my love towards plants and animals and i decided to go for botany i completed my graduation hmm. and uh, I, i think during that botany uh, i did a lot of excursions i did right. i think every year we used to go for at least two excursions official excursions and then the picnics are the different you know, things with friends so that is how my interest about uh, different uh, destinations of traveling and you know uh, uh, little uh, more about uh, you know discovering new uh, aspects of tourism came into me and uh, so after three years of that i had already had a plan of joining garwari institute from mumbai university and that is how i gave my exams i got selected and i joined the post graduate diploma for uh, tourism management uh, at garwari and those two years were fantastic because it gave me an opportunity not just to learn about the travel agency aspect but also to understand how the tourism industry or tourism boards work what is the necessity to develop a destination how do we conduct uh, tourism festivals what is happening in india the tourism events the exhibitions uh, i think that was a fabulous package that we were presented uh, from the university itself and uh, that that became a total base for my future interest you know so i got to know that this is not just about working in a travel agency but there are a lot of other aspects to tourism and then after that i joined kst travels so i was lucky enough to have a, a good uh, what you call uh, bosses who taught me about sales and you know marketing and uh, operations and mainly about customer uh, handling so that is how everything started Uh, so further i was like no i need to learn something more in tourism and uh, and again i did a lot of research like uh, which can be the best country which can be the best uh, university and basically i wanted to uh, i had this in mind and what i want to learn in tourism so i had a lot of different universities offering different courses but uh, sheffield hallam university course attracted me because it was talking about how to develop a destination how to manage uh, the destination what about uh, how to market it so it attracted me a lot and thankfully i got selected with that university and that is how i met hemant as well as my classmate and i think we had a fabulous time uh, you know so uh, i think we both can agree that we met lot of people around there from different countries everyone coming from a different background but a liking towards tourism uh, so he was more into hospitality our modules were a bit different because i was total 100% tourism he was uh, tourism and hospitality okay. uh, but at the end of the day we used to have so many people together so uh, even though we had subjects uh, uh, which were hard for tourism main thing what we learned was being together with the different people you know so we had people from almost all the countries from europe africa uh, south east asian countries we had from pakistan from bangladesh and uh, and never was a time where we felt that we all are different we used to have fun together we used to study together do projects together we, had, we used to go for shopping for partying we used to cook dinners together And thrown out of the class together yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely so we always had this feeling that uh, you know we are indian can so we do this kind of fun but no i think people all over the world are same we all have this uh, thing that we have to have fun together and that is where we learned that it is very easy to connect to people 
it is very easy to respect to others cultures and be um, appreciate each other's differences and still be great friends and after all these years so it's almost like 12 years now that we graduated and we all are still friends we probably whenever we visit those countries we try to meet them if not they are still on our friend facebook list and they are not just there they are actually very actively we all are friends and it has helped me and uh, also when we talk about indian context we had again indians from different parts of india so hemant is from hyderabad i had a lot of people from north india south india and there were language differences cultural differences but uh, somehow we all connected you know right. and uh, and we never felt that we are so different and that right. is what we basically learned so more than the uh, theories of tourism this was the more practical learning what we got from uh, i say uh, when we studied internationally so even further right. i went to do mba uh, from middlesex university in london and there i would say i learned more about business management and you know how to run entrepreneurship and again more of practical learning but i always say that these uh, practical things of you know understanding each other came from uh, those international exposure that we all had together right absolutely yeah. uh, so my next question to the both uh, to both of you would be uh, how did this so like uh, deepthi already said that you know it enhanced her understanding of how tourism uh, brings people together essentially uh, so may it be in a classroom may it be while traveling may it be in any form so yeah. global exposure always helps so uh, do you think uh, tourism courses uh, what do you see uh, like in the future moving forward for students who are pursuing tourism courses i would like to know from both of you uh, how does a global perspective and a global understanding of the situations help and what uh, how has how has that defined uh, the way you look at tourism so has it changed because you had a degree outside of india that you know the way you interpret tourism versus you know somebody who would interpret tourism sitting in his his or her home country home country right. yeah so i would like to know from the both of you what do you think uh, does the uh, change does the perspective change or does it kind of come together at the end on its own aniket uh, i have seen students in my college we have international students from different countries i uh, i think we have 27 different countries student studying in my college right yeah uh, uh, so uh, i think uh, the way we teach here the way we used mm-hmm. to study in abroad is almost same okay is uh, almost same only the modules are different and marking uh, system is different right. i feel like in india we even we do a spoon feed you know uh, mm-hmm. like we feel like okay this is a, a kid or we need to give him a notes we need to teach him right. in a better way likewise we teach in india but in abroad uh, it's very open they uh, like lecture give us a lecture and he, uh, he or she will leave the class and only very few lecturers are very keen like i can say uh, we used to me and dp used to have a combined lecture of 4 uh, hours wow. Do you remember dp yes yes yeah yeah, yeah professor what is his name i forgot john forbrook ah uh, john forbrook yeah yes. uh, he is the author you know uh, when when he is teaching we never felt we we are sitting in a 4 hours class that's how you know we used to have a world tour in that class that's how uh, i learned from john forbrook uh, i'm just imitating i can't be even a small uh, you know tiny uh, bit of him i can tell that for sure uh, he used to take us to world tour like from mumbai Uh, to china china to uh, somewhere in uh, north korea south korea then he used to take to middle east from middle east he used to take to south africa north america south america then you, again to europe you know in one class you are you are watching yeah. many countries you you are able to understand yes this is there in our country why can't we do in this way you know a tourism is such a, such a study where uh, we can enhance we can teach our students in a better way we can we can uh, visualize now now everything is very easy everyone can open their uh, insta and they can they can follow different uh, countries and different places in our time it is not like that you know what teachers used to teach us we used to visualize if they are talking about venice we used to close our eyes and our teachers used to teach us how venice looks 
you know wow. i'm not yeah. uh, i'm not like that good i can say but i'm trying my level best to take them to venice from hyderabad true <laughs> from my classroom right. okay that that's how that's how we need to we need to teach it's not about which country you are uh, studying or uh, in which uh, university you are studying it is right. how keen you want to know about the subject how interested you are into the subject yes over to you dipti yeah what you feel Absolutely. so uh, as he was mentioning about john scott brooks so uh, obviously we had a lot of other professors like sujan on our bill from bill mukula yeah. bama and uh, there was this uh, thing that these professors have been teaching uh, students from all over the world and uh, that is where they started even uh, inculcating that feeling that you know we all are different Uh, the professors itself belong to different countries we all belong to different countries but at the end of the day what uh, do we have for each other so as you were saying that yes in his class we used to have different people from different countries so he used to make us speak about our country so he never said that this is right or wrong so there he used to be very free that talk about your country let us know what happens uh, in tourism sector in your country or what are the political views about uh, or so things are happening in your country and that is how we started knowing each other you know so we uh, we came to know about what is happening in russia what are the uh, social issues in russia how the women are not so independent in russia so then there are other countries so we had people from bangladesh who had a lot of poverty and you know how the, that person came out of that core this thing and started studying in our uh, university so there was always this mixture of thoughts and um, uh ideas and our professors uh, as he said like during that time we ha- didn't had all this google and everything available at our ease so uh, our professors used to teach us in a way where we had to go back to the library read so much books do lot of uh, read lot of articles and journals and uh, and then write up uh, do the uh, what do you call uh, um what do you call? projects basically sorry so yeah uh, assignment yeah assignments and uh, those assignments were always based on real case studies and real facts and figures so it was not about doing copy paste or anything and that is how we learned that you know we we cannot just think about something and uh, uh, go to a wikipedia or a google read about some news and write about it no we have to have some authentications we have we cannot just uh, say that this is what i feel but we have to give pros and cons about what we feel so tomorrow if i say that tourism is a good industry i have to give them um, proof that why tourism is a good industry and why not and that is how that uh, critical analysis or research methodology and everything that is what we studied over there and that was uh, actually a very helpful sessions for us um, in terms of growing you know so it was uh, as i said it was uh theory as well as well as the practical uh, life sessions that we uh, learned from this professor right uh okay my next question to the both of you is uh, now that it is covid time and you know if, uh, even the tourism industry has suffered a major setback so i think innovation is the uh, need of the hour and looking forward i would like to know from both of you what are the prospects uh, people who have just entered into tourism or are still pursuing tourism as a career option so what are the different avenues uh, where they can look at creating businesses and can we uh, enter deep into this discussion and explore possibilities of what all students can look forward to despite the pandemic despite the economic recession despite the slowdown how uh, there is a lot of opportunity in terms of innovating tourism practices and better tourism practices coming in so i think deepthi and himant i would like you to uh, get into this discussion deep Please yeah so himant can start from his hospitality industry because he has yes. been working there. i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah uh, there is a misconnection i'm sorry okay yeah So Himant, yeah. would you like me to repeat myself? Or... Yeah, yeah, no worries. I had your question. Okay. Um, I can say uh, what students. I, I, I want to start with the students. What uh, pursuing students? What they need to learn, and right. how they can utilize this time. Right. Basically, I can say they can do a short term courses, or they can do a language course. Basically, language is a language plays a vital role these days. They can la- learn. Um, 
for hospitality students, especially French is main language. So, because most of the menu items, like we say, a la carte, al dante. So we use in culinary terms, mostly French terms only. So uh, it's very important if they learn French, uh, if they are interested in hospitality, they can learn French. Uh, or else they can learn Spanish because um, uh, after English, Spanish is most spoken language in, around the world. Or else they can learn Arabic. These days there is a great value for uh, people who can speak Arabic. It's not only for uh, tourism, uh, sorry, hospitality students, even for the tourism students who are in Hyderabad. Uh, today I'm talking to one of my friends who is a medical, uh, to, uh, I mean, um, uh, medical tourism. He is a person who works for the hospitals. So right. they, they invite people from different parts of the world. So they right. require people who can speak Arabic because most of the world, uh, they are speaking Arabic. Uh, I mean, Africans, even uh, Middle East, most of the region, they are speaking Arabic. So right. we need people who can speak different languages. So stu uh, as a student, there is a great opportunity for them uh, to learn. This is a great time, actually, because there is no pressure for them to offer their assignments and all. Even uh, as a professor, I can say, apart from this time, we always give them some or other work. Every week, they need to do some or other task. Now, as a student, they can learn different languages. So, or uh, yeah, if they if they are very good with their languages, then they can um, think about itineraries, how to make itineraries, or uh, how to how to they can study packages like uh, which country is having what packages and how countries are doing and uh, what uh, what are included in the packages. They can study little things, you know, that will improve, that will enhance their skill, or else they can study about ticketing ticketing course which uh, is very useful they can start their own business as uh, as and when they finish or before they finish their course also they can start their own business so pandemic okay pandemic time give them a opportunity to learn so i feel students should uh, think in different way uh, that's what i always uh, i always ask my students to think differently normally anyone can think Anyone can make a dosa. If you are making a dosa with some other batter, if you are making a dosa in some other way, then then there is a demand for your product. Okay, uh, so uh, we need to create our demand. That's what I need to say. Yeah, over to you, Dipti. Okay. Uh, so you spoke about students, and I would say that uh, after uh, completing your course, I think there are unlimited possibilities that are available here. So. Uh, we usually know more about that we can go into travel agents or we can go as a tour operator or work in a resort or in a hotel. Uh, apart from that, we can also walk into, uh, again, in these sectors, there are domestic as, in, as well as international opportunities. Uh, plus, people can go into airlines, people can work uh, into IRCTC, which is the Railway Tourism Ministry. Uh, they can work um, into visa consulates, they can work into tourism boards, they can work into destination management companies. Uh, there are uh, cruise lines, cruise lines, uh, yeah, cruise lines, absolutely. So, uh, India has uh, as a new uh, total uh, what you call an industry starting and coming up very uh, rapidly, which is the cruise liners, so they can work there. So uh, even at in cruise liners, I would say so there is a need as you call it. You can have different languages. You can be the guides. You can have a hospitality background and go into a cruise or in an airline. Uh, you can uh, if you know ticketing, if you know uh, tour operations. So you know uh, the more skills you know, you have a wide spectrum available towards you. So any uh, uh, medium you take or any industry you take. Uh, your skills no, need not be limited to say one travel agency or a tour operator thing. You can have scope anywhere. Even if you are say on a cruise, there is so much of entertainment. So if you are a singer, you can work uh, on the cruise uh, as a singer or as an entertainer. Uh, you you have so many uh, you know, opportunities available to you. Also, uh, I would say there is uh, more about you can if you are good into writing, you can go into content writing, you can go into blogging and blogging, uh, you can go into travel journalism, uh, you can, uh, you know, be photography. Quality. Yeah, photography, exactly. 
uh, you can even be volunteers at uh, certain places you know so for example uh, there are students tours or there are adventure tours or there is wildlife and you can work as volunteers for initial experiences so right. i think the more you discover and more you identify your skills there are thousands of opportunities uh, that are available out there absolutely uh, i think i'll agree with the both of you that uh, exploration and you know uh, once you dip your toe in the water then only can you know how to swim so yes. without dipping your toe in the water you really can't uh, decide that you know uh, this is what i'm going to do so yeah. with tourism also i feel that uh, rather than you know putting on blinders and looking at just one typical job uh, sector uh, or just finding a job or a placement in a tourism company a big with a fat paycheck i think people can look at uh, different opportunities and how they can themselves uh, become better tour operators and have a deeper understanding before they settle down for one path for their life yeah, yeah. Uh, okay so i think the next question uh, would be uh, what are the uh, so like we have listed down a couple of the jobs we have said cruises we have said uh, language guides we said uh guiding for you know medical professionals so many things we we have come across do you think uh right now uh, so like there was this very interesting uh, thing that i was reading the other day there is something called war tourism there is a person in israel who has started yeah. doing this and he is uh, i think sorry a palestinian sorry i'm my bad so there was a palestinian person who has started it and uh, so basically what he does is he has a very interesting model so he gets two guides one from the syrian side one from the palestinian side they both come and they guide you at the same tour so it is just that they don't uh, contradict each other's views they don't contradict in any terms they just explain you the history the progression of events and they take you around the city and they give you a glimpse of what uh, the city is like according to them so i think uh, looking forward i think we can look for things like this in india war tourism there has been wars and if we can use that to create peace not to promote war but not to enlarge the differences but rather find a way to use those differences and find the similarities between and bring it together i think uh, between me and deepthi and i think i'm sure himant also would agree that we both uh, at least we too want to go to pakistan we want to explore the food we want to explore the wildlife we want to explore just the area you know uh, me and deepthi we yeah. used to live with pakistanis well, in yeah, uh, exactly. in sheffield yeah. um, you know one of my uh, friends mom i can say she used to cook uh, a nice food for us like a homely food and yeah. she used to sustain us with a love you know yeah. it's all government who is creating problem it's not people yeah. who create problem people yeah. over india and over pakistan are same and yeah, we exactly. have different mentalities so yeah i do agree there is nothing wrong visiting any country in the world Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah i think yeah. it will be a lot of fun sorry please go ahead yeah, yeah yeah no yesterday i was telling you the story of my chinese friend so who uh, mm-hmm. so she was from beijing and how she really uh, was a really great friend of mine and then when i went to stay with her at her place the hospitality that uh, she offered to me was so similar to what we as a, a host in our country would do to any guest coming to our home and uh, it is it is like uh, so good like you you be anywhere anywhere in the world and it's so good to have friends all over the world uh, dipti do you remember that chinese girl who invited me for food she cooked yeah. all vegetarian for me all vegetarian i'm vegetarian wow. still she cooked yeah. all vegetarian for me for me i'm like really proud because they know they don't eat vegetarian <laughs> at all they don't know what vegetarian looks like Yeah. Then yeah. also, she cooked everything vegetarian for me. It's it's what uh, love and affection. It's all about people. You know, it's not about politics. Politics, yeah, they play a different way. But the people in every country are same, similar, and their their mentalities are similar. Everywhere there are two people. There are two kinds of people. One is good and one is bad. So yeah. in India also, we can see bad people everywhere. It's same. Even right. in, it may be in Pakistan or it may be in UK. You you will find bad people everywhere in the world. yeah absolutely yeah. so uh looking forward i think uh, we need to like you uh, both said that we need to s- uh, start using tourism to build bridges rather than burning them and yeah, yeah. finding similarities and you know how we can connect those so uh, moving forward i think one more thing that i want to explore with you guys is how any typical destination which has been tagged as a typical thing for example i would like to pick up the example of ladakh 
So Ladakh is considered a typical biking experience. Okay, it is the mecca for all infield lovers to go out there and just drive a bike. But yes. how it can be so much more than that? It can be so many different, um, you know, ways of tourism and you know the kind of uh, experiences you could have at the same destination. And it's not just Ladakh I'm trying to uh, bring out here. I'm just trying to uh, understand from you two how any destination can be looked at from multiple angles than the one that is already established. So, uh, Deepi, would you like to take over? Uh, yes, sure. Why not? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, every destination has their own USPs, and people uh, uh, we call this as destination image in very technical terms. So, uh, this destination image is formed that when certain people go to a place, uh, they uh, look at that place and they form a perspective about it or opinion about it. And they come back home and they come and tell you. So, for example, I'll go to Ladakh in a, way, a particular way and I'll come back and tell you that Aniket, uh, the best thing to do in Ladakh is to go on a bike ride because a lot of people have done it. And ultimately, over the couple of years, this destination image is formed. And uh, that is how people, uh, you know, start connecting it. And then absolutely people forget that what is other things available at that place. Right. So I think more than me, in fact, you can tell better because you spent uh, incredible amount of time in Ladakh. So, uh, yeah, but um, yes, it is more about how we look at the destinations and what how we can explore it further and what we can and just try to, uh, you know, uh, l not limit ourselves to one thing. So right. go, don't say that uh, because he has done something, even I'm supposed to go and do it. If I mm. think that no, for me, food is very important. So tomorrow, right. probably doing everything else, I'll go to the Ladakh and find uh, their, uh, you know, a regional recipe rather than anything else. Yeah. So that is how uh, tourism should be or the destination image of that uh, particular destination should be, I would say. Absolutely, absolutely. I completely agree with you on this. And uh, what I would like to do is quickly throw certain images out there. I'd yes. like to share my screen. Uh, can you tell me? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can see. Wow. Okay. So uh, this is an image of the Hanley Observatory. So I'm sure uh, I'll just turn off my video for the time being. Uh, sure. Yes. We all so, can, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is a uh, image uh, from the Hanley Observatory. So I'm sure everybody who's been to Ladakh has been to Somuriri. And if you've been to Somuriri, you've crossed this place. So this is the Hanley Observatory in uh, Ladakh. And it is known for having one of the biggest telescopes in India. And this is a phenomenal place for a lot of things, not just astronomy. So this is one of the things that I like to do when I go to Ladakh. This is astronomy. Uh, when we are exploring, uh, like I said, when we are looking at exploring different, um, sorry, uh, different forms of this, the second thing I would love doing at Hanley is birding. So a lot of people don't know Ladakh is a heaven for birders. So if you are wow. interested in doing birding, this is an image of the black necked crane. Okay, this is a Siberian crane which uh, migrates every year and it roosts here. So it nests, uh, makes nests in the shallow grasslands. And this is a black necked crane and it is considered pious in Ladakh. So it's never hunted or it's not disturbed in any way. So this has been a roosting ground for several, several years. So Ladakh also has this to offer. Uh, this another image that I want to show. Uh, this is a cultural uh, aspect of Ladakh that not a lot of people go into. So there's a lot of Aryan civilization, okay, which is different from the typical Buddhist civilization which exists in the majority of the Ladakh area. So once you move, uh, there are a couple of villages which have authentic Aryan people, which are tribals. They are slightly different than the local people involved. And there's another cultural exchange that one could explore once they are at Ladakh. Uh, again, this is another very uh, favorite image of mine. So there is a concept in Ladakh called farm stays. So what they've done is uh, they are farming and to make farming more sustainable, uh, there are women of the villages who have been made heads like matriarchs and uh, they're usually tied to a monastery next to them. And the farm stay is at the backdrop of the monastery. And these uh, places, uh, if you go and stay there, rather than a typical resort or a typical three-star hotel in Leh, 
these are all in the fringe of lay uh, they are not very far from this and they are very scenic locations at the have these farm stays but when you go and stay there you not only help the local community but you also understand the challenges of the farming at that high altitude so this is the reason i wanted to show this image uh this is something i'm sure everybody is aware of the hemis festival uh it happens every year and there's a big uh a uh, lot of people go there and you know experience what it is like uh, during this buddhist festival uh this is another landscape uh, photograph from one of our previous speakers mr keda bede who had joined us for a session couple of uh, days ago this is an image of somoriri during winter so this is a frozen lake uh so during winter this thing freezes and you can explore landscape photography this is something not a lot of people try and do but it is incredible to uh, you know experience uh, ladakh this way in the winter and explore landscape photography uh, ladakh everybody is familiar with the rugged terrains the tall mountains and the endless um, mountain vistas that we get to see so this is another angle of landscape photography uh, which is called frozen lakes photography uh, which kedar does and he leads tours to the, uh, that so that is something another aspect that people could you know join uh, this is another image uh, if you see there's a runner on the road so last to last year uh, last two years rather there has been something happening in ladakh which is inviting people from world over to come and participate it's called the ladakh marathon so at a high altitude marathon it's a 21 km marathon and people and athletes from all over the world come and participate in this it's a very different model there is cycling uh, there then there is running marathons both of them uh, occur during this time it's usually done in the summer and this is something that you know it's a great innovation for some uh, place to start something like this uh lastly uh this is a small image i have i wish i could zoom and show you uh if you can see these are petroglyphs so this is again a prehistoric evidence that there are petroglyphs in ladakh and they show a lot of animals including the snow leopard and if you can see this particular image it's a deer shaped thing uh which looks like an ibex so and there is a sun next to it so this is another thing that you know when people go to ladakh they typically go just to those checkpoints of you know shanti stupa khardungla pass and uh, you know uh, nubra valley or for that matter pangong so people don't really explore uh, the area these are all on the way to these popular destinations uh, all these locations that i mentioned till now are all a part of you know the typical ladakh itinerary it is just that people don't ask for these experiences so uh, okay coming back to uh, i'm stopping my slide show uh, what i was trying to bring out here was the discussion that when we are looking at a typical destination ladakh is very extremely uh, you know tourist friendly a lot of people have gone there a lot of people have blogged about it a lot of information is uh, you know out there already so when you are looking at a destination how should you look at it i think uh, i have learned my perspective about how we can travel differently but uh, when it comes to planning a destination i think hemant and deepthi i think you will be better at explaining how we can plan a destination over to you deepthi yes absolutely uh, so i have always been asking uh, uh, like people have been asking me that you know how do we plan a destination or why india is not coming up with new destinations and why it is not growing like what singapore is doing or what europe is doing and they have better tourism opportunities and better attractions and you know things like that so uh, yeah as a consultant i work uh, with a uh, certain uh, Cons uh, bigger consultants who work with government, and we, uh, you know, submit plans to government saying that if this destination should be developed or no. So there is this huge process behind uh, developing a destination, and that is what we both had learned into our uh, Sheffield Hallam University course. That how do we develop a destination? What are the strategic planning that goes behind it, and why we should do it? so when i work on such government projects the first question is is there a need to actually come up with a new destination and if yes uh, then how do we do it 
so we do a lot of feasibility studies we go out on the fields we visit that place we meet the local people we talk to them uh, we meet a lot of stakeholders so it can be a small pan wala or a restaurant or uh, you know the hotel guys or we can also talk to the local ministers or uh, even the local mlas and so there is a lot of people who play a very important role to decide whether this destination needs a development or not we also speak uh, to the environmentalist or we speak to people uh, the engineers or the architects you know so there is a whole co- combination where we all analyze at a every single point to that uh, what impact this can create on that destination so our uh, we have this pros and cons that we generally decide uh, whether this development is going to bring in lot of uh, environmental issues whether it is going to affect or have a cultural shock to the society whether it is going to have uh, is going to affect positively to the local economy and what is the financial analysis that uh, how much we can spend into the development so uh, we have this concept called as carrying capacity of the destination so when we are talking about ladakh you know that every year thousands and thousands of bikers and troops try to go to the ladakh but when we look from the uh, local resource point of view we have to think do ladakh or does the ladakh people have their own resources is there enough water to drink is there enough uh, food which is available uh, so you know um, is there uh, enough hotels to stay and what about uh, resources like electricity or traffic jam so uh, infrastructure facilities is there hospitals which are available so there are a lot of things that we have to think before we say that this uh, uh, you know destination is an ideal destination for tourism it can be the most beautiful landscape it will it might have lot of uh, natural heritage it will have lot of uh, tigers but is there a necessity and what True. benefits are going to uh, it is going to create on that particular economy of the local communities is it going to disturb the economy so like you work with a lot of tribal communities and uh, and we also were discussing that uh, whether it is really necessary that we take everyone to meet to the tribals and uh, you know uh, let out the secrets of what the tribal life is all about and is it going to really disturb the whole uh, uh, what we call uh, their community uh, and uh, heritage yeah so uh, that is what uh, tourism should be uh, also about it shouldn't be just about our careers and all about our pleasures but uh, it should also be about the planning and uh, you know a lot of research uh, whether uh, we should do something about destination or no right i think uh, you have summed it very beautifully saying that how we need to be more conscious kemant yeah. i would like to know uh, in the age where you know people are flocking by the dozens dozens <laughs> of rather thousands so now uh, with the population uh, all over the world it, at every destination it's not just india i can i can tell you a best yeah. example of uh, yeah. florence you know yeah. now florence is empty uh, because of covid right. it may be uh, like uh, i feel now florentines are very happy because they can dance in their streets Absolutely. previously they can't even walk on their streets you know there are dozens not dozens hundreds and hundreds of tourist uh, yeah. groups are coming uh, you know and yeah uh, you know when we talk to there is no offense but when we talk to a florentine person they will tell uh, you know we are happy many chinese are coming to our florence um, as a tourist and we are getting money but we are not happy because they are taking our privacy because you know in between the street they will stop and they will take a selfie because they are there to uh, they, in that country they are there to uh, enjoy they are there to right. you know take a selfie and they want to show us what's happening and what's happening in their life but for a local it's very uh, frustrating i can say you know you're walking and on your way you'll find a person taking a picture right. it's also a privacy issue or sometimes Absolutely. you know so people don't like or most of the times like this i can i can tell you a best example of venice um, in venice there are uh, hundreds and thousands of people coming every day so what happened to Vene- venetians they don't uh, they don't get a house to stay you know uh, all the houses were turned into bnbs so there is not even a single venetian family who can let in a house so it's very sad you can't stay in your own own destination 
uh, that's really really frustrating the venetians i can understand mm-hmm. uh, when we talk about malta malta you know in malta they don't uh, they do have a lot of water scarcity because of tourism not only because of tourism there is another uh, another uh, thing which is going on there because um, for illegal immigrants they feel malta is the uh, gateway to enter into the europe so maybe because of illegal immigrants or maybe because of tourism malta mm-hmm. such a beautiful country which is not uh, doing really good because uh, because of tourism they don't have water they need to get water from italy to drink water they need to get water from italy which which is really sad that uh, you know the person who is staying in that country they can't have their own water they can't use their own natural resources they are exhausted i uh, i can say ladakh uh, ladakh i heard i am not sure uh, about this but i heard or i read from some books that people are going to ladakh and they are throwing lots of uh, plastic on ladakh not only in ladakh even in the um, uh, himalayan mountains when they go for trekking they leave all their trekking equipment over the mountains and they leave, come back without anything so this is frustrating you know you are spoiling the place you are spoiling the floral and fauna which are uh, depending on that destination so which, which is not really really good because we are all talking about sustainability and uh, un uh, wto uh, goal is uh, goals for sustainability is to protect the place and protect people uh, protect their lives so uh, what about uh, protect the water hey everything needs to protect who will protect we need to protect but what we are doing we are spoiling we are going and spoiling <laughs> Right. so anyhow yeah this is two other way of coin what deepthi said is uh, the positive way and what i am telling is the negative way but, but we want it's necessary yeah it's tourism to happen to bring it out yeah yeah we, we want tourism to happen but it should happen in a protective way it should happen in a safe way even right. i think you both will accept with me i completely agree with you yeah so i think uh, when we speak of tourism as a individual i think uh, i started doing wildlife tourism i am into wildlife tourism i started because i love wildlife and if i love wildlife i want to do something to protect it i want people to experience it for sure but at the same time i want to protect it equally it's not that i want to degrade the habitat i don't want to stress out the animals and do tourism at the cost of it so you know that's where i think uh, looking forward like we all keep saying that you know the planet is healing with the covid pandemic uh, you know uh, people are learning their lesson i genuinely <laughs> hope that you know with tourism it is so and that we respond to better practices and i think uh, rather than you know going by any industry sa- standard or just following some uh, trend rather than just saying that we are sustainable or eco tourism or responsible tourism rather than just saying it we try starting with small changes a little by little and creating better itineraries where we are slightly more mindful than what we used to be little more careful about the kind of uh, accommodations we give the kind of experiences we give and look at moving the crowd from the typical landscape to upbeat so not only does it spread the economic benefits of tourism over a wider area it also reduces the pressure of tourism from that one particular area like you said uh, italy italy is uh, reeling from all the uh, pressures of tourism and you know uh, oh. then it comes to the point where you know like tra uh, did this uh, that they have now a limited n- yeah. number of people who can enter the city on a given day so if we don't want to come to that uh, situation where you know there is restrictions on travel i think uh, we'll have to start looking at destinations and spreading them across and moving the flow of people over a wider destinations so i think uh, i think personally i would feel that you know experiential tourism should kick in now uh, rather than just you know doing a checklist of itineraries you know where you are just doing cities or you know locations or monuments or whatever experiences we are looking for and rather going to experiential sort of tourism uh, so i think that is what me and dp both love to do and i think that would be the future uh, coming in the coming days Yeah. can i add something can i add something yeah um, yeah because um, i i just came across a bhutan issue you know the people who all went to bhutan they they spoiled the image of indians now yeah. bhutan is also charging uh, for indians they are also charging uh, fee per day fee you know yeah. uh, who should pay the fees not the people who are going those those people who went they need to pay but we are paying because they made mistake we are paying which is really unfair which is really yeah. unfair i i want to tell this uh, yeah thank you <laughs> carry on i yeah. completely agree with you on this one 
Yeah. Uh, so basically, I think moving forward, uh, what I would like to know from Deepi is, uh, like we discussed right now about destination planning and the problems that step up with tourism. So how can we travel? Can you give us a certain glimpse into what Soulful Journeys offers in terms of providing better experiences in those typical destinations like we discussed? Can you share us with an example, perhaps? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, so my whole idea of Soulful Journeys was that uh, probably because I studied tourism for all these years and I have been a consultant, I probably understand the intricacies of that uh, industry as well as the destination and how it should uh, leave a positive impact on that particular destination and the community. So uh, my idea about Soulful Journey is more about um, giving good experiences in a responsible way. And also I want people to be more uh, of an explorer than the traveler. Uh, so when I, uh, so giving an example, I would rather start from a very uh, nearby destination for people from Mumbai and Pune, see Lonavla. So when we generally think about Lonaula, we think that, yeah, we have to go to Bushi Dam, we have to eat uh, chickpeas and go to the restaurant, have uh, alcohol, liquor and just come back. But uh, have we looked further into it? No. So now uh, Lonaula is famous as a religious tourism, can be famous as a religious tourism because it's a religious destination for certain Maharashtrian communities uh, because we have our uh, goddess Ikvira Devi. There are three most fabulous Buddhist caves, which is Karla, Bhejke, and Bhaja caves. Uh, it has the most wonderful architecture of all the caves uh, in Buddhism. So uh, it can be a source of architectural tourism or archaeological tourism. Uh, then we have a lot of uh, nature, we have a lot of options. There is a lot of jungles and forests around Lonavla where we can go for birding as well. Uh, then we have, uh, because of the climate and that ambience, we can have a lot of uh, yoga and meditation tours around Lonavla. Uh, it is also very well known for food. So you can try out a lot of different foods in Lonavla as well. As we know that chikki is very uh, famous, the fudge is very famous. There are two, three uh, local brands are which is famous. So uh, as a foodie, you can travel from Mumbai to from, or from Pune to go to Lonavla. So when you just look at one aspect of a destination, uh, then it, it becomes very narrow. But when we think about what else can we do, what else can uh, be uh, option, options that we can find in that destination. So if you, even there is Dela Adventure. So if you're thinking of doing a lot of adventure uh, as well. So uh, yeah, Dela Adventures is the place where you can have uh, those kind of activities as well. So imagine just one destination and you have so many options available. And that okay. is what, what I want to tell that just don't think about offbeat destinations, but think about the same destination and offbeat experience. So, right. it, yeah. So, basically, uh, we take the same ingredients and make something different out of it yeah, and package absolutely. it as something completely different. It should be like that. Yes, yeah. it should be. Yeah. Yes. So, it is yeah. like uh, the same Maggie, and you add like 10 different uh, options to it. In fact, Lonala is famous for the Maggie stalls as well. Like, yeah. Ask anyone uh, and people. Yeah. Chiki, Chiki. I think you, yeah. when we went, we bought Chiki, isn't it? Yes, we yes. did have Chiki in between. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Hemant, I would like to know from you uh, moving forward, how do you look at educational tours or industrial visits or these learning uh, things? So, do you think uh, this is a growing need? And uh, if it is so, how can this be made better? Like, you know, like at least when I went on field visits or, you know, industrial visits, we just went to a factory, we did some time pass, we looked at something, came back, copied somebody's project file saying, Ki, this is what we saw. We got the topper and like a backbencher, like I was in school, I just copied the topper's notes and that's how it was for me. So no, how do you think tourism can uh, create better opportunities for learning in terms of, you know, exposures? So learning can be for any sort of field, but how yeah. tourism can be integrated with it? Can you share some you, insights? You know, like um, uh, there are certain programs in Europe, like uh, Erasmus and Erasmus Press program. I have right. seen students coming to uh, from different countries. Erasmus is for only Europeans and Erasmus Plus is for entire world. You know, okay. students come for different courses over there and they got good societies for that. You know, okay. four months, uh, for four months, they do study as well as they do 
uh, they do enjoy. It's not only study all the time. Right. They do have uh, activities as well as they do have uh, studies. Both the things needs to combine. So in right. India also, we need to plan something. You know, it should be something. You know, if if someone is going on a tour, it should be of their choice. It should not be a choice of the professor. You know, right. your professor will ask you to visit a Coke store, uh, Coke Coca Cola company. You may not be interested in Coca Cola company. You may be interested in uh, in some bike or automobile company, wherein you want to go. So you know it should be specific to students. So we need to have some idea like uh, they need to give opportunity. College needs to give some opportunity to students to choose where they want to go. Instead, uh, they will ask, okay, all uh, 50 students from the class or all 100 students from the class will go to same destination. No, everybody don't like uh, because uh, in simple terms, someone like uh, chapati, someone like maggi. Right. This is this is of your personal choice. You know, likewise, uh, why industrial tour should be same for everyone? It should be different for everyone. You know, like um, I can give uh, my best example from my last year. I mean, this year, second year MBA from my college. Right. You know, they have chosen. They have chosen where to go. As a tourism students, we give them opportunity. Uh, yeah, you people decide where you want to go. So right. they made their itinerary. They did their booking. Yeah, for tourism students, it is easy because they study this thing. For others, okay, it may be tough, but they can take help of some other people who know these things better. Okay. Right. So they can they can make a, a good. Plan and they can they can enjoy as well as they can study simultaneously. So right. which is very important, which is very important as a student. They need to they need to choose. They need to have the opportunity of choosing, which is lagging in India. I can I'm very sorry for them. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, but I think that void needs to be filled, like you rightly said, that there is a necessity for students to go out and learn and experience. And uh -huh. I think. Um, I think all uh, universities, whatever the course might be, uh, relevant to them. I think they should provide opportunities for the students to go out and experience. Uh, no. And I think, uh, I think to be very honest, I feel that is the one shortcoming of our, uh, you know, like you said, like everybody is sent to that one typical field visit rather than you know giving them the opportunity to explore or think why do they want to go to a particular field visit yeah. and what is the learning they are seeking out of that visit. So I think uh, for me. Uh, I got into wildlife tourism by negating the other tourisms. So I was like, I don't want to do leisure. I don't want to do religious. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And finally, I came down to wildlife tourism, which just clicked with me. So rather than that, had I got an opportunity early on to you know explore the different kinds of tourism, I would have easily found my way to wildlife rather than going into five different categories and then narrowing it down. But there uh, I dorostai. So I think I'm much more happy that you know I'm in wildlife tourism now, and I I'm very clear about what I want to do in wildlife tourism, not the typical tiger tourism or the typical you know crowding in safaris and stuff like that. So uh, I would like to take a few minutes uh, now to you know just discuss how wildlife tourism, uh, from my perspective, can be made a little different. So uh, again, I'll be sharing my screen. Uh, let me just stop my video. So, uh, Deepti, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is a typical image from Kana. Okay, I'm using Kana because it's one of uh, one of the leading wildlife destinations across India. And this is what you typically get to see at Kana. You go there and you do a safari. Okay. This is the experience that almost all wildlife operators say. This is the only thing that you can do there. Prop. Practically, they just tell you that you know you can come here and do a safari. So, uh, so this is how you usually do a safari. You go out in an open jeep, and you get to experience the forest. You get to see some animals while you are at it. You get to see some landscapes, and that is the end of the trip. But uh, for me, uh, when I look at wildlife, I think it's a learning ground. It's a ground where you can learn so many more things than just wildlife. So uh, I'll start with this. So this is something I love doing when I go on my wildlife trips. I take some time out from my itinerary and I go to the local school, okay, and I interact and I show them pictures of what I have clicked in their own backyard. So uh, believe it or not, a lot of places in wildlife. So even if you go to Kana, Bandhavgarh, Dantambur, Corbett, which destination you think of, a lot of the students haven't seen all the animals that you get to see on a safari. 
that is why they are inside the jungle these people live outside not a lot of them have seen all the animals so if you can go and show them the images they connect with you better number one number two uh, when they see somebody from outside coming and appreciating what they have in their backyard it gives them an impetus to save it and when i look at it i think it's a very responsible thing that we need to do as wildlife tour operators specifically to you know inculcate this habit of uh, you know appreciating wildlife so this is something i do uh, this is another thing that i love doing on my trips playing wildlife games you are in wildlife not everything has to be taught through safaris or through visual medium you can use games uh, there are a lot of games available across the thing and you can interweave messages into it of conservation and you know identifying different birds animals trees whatever so i like i love doing uh, with my uh, you know people who travel with me uh, this is something that i think me and deepthi very strongly agree on this is uh, tribal interactions i genuinely believe that tribals are the true naturalists and they have the best knowledge of the uh, forest because they have lived around forest for centuries and centuries now and they understand the area much better than probably what a uh, you know a city naturalist would so i think uh, naturalists deserve the truest right over the forest like we say and uh, when there is tourism in that area they should be the ones to benefit from it the most not the person who lives in the city so uh, even though i am making the whole experience come together i think uh, we have wildlife to show especially in india i think we owe it to the local communities that they still live with wild animals in the backyard and continue to do so harmoniously that is why we have wildlife to show a lot of the countries had wildlife back in the day but you know they have all hunted it down or they have had trouble or conflict with wildlife and they just ended the wolves or ended the tigers or whatever predators were out there so india deserves a lot of credit for you know being able to live with these uh, wild animals very close in close quarters and still do so well so i think when we do wildlife tourism we need to give back to the local communities specifically and encourage the art forms associated with those local communities uh, this is uh, the bega tribe from mp so this is very endemic to kana so they have these amazing tattoos they have this amazing jewelry that they wear and they have a dance form as well so i usually encourage my guests to you know pay a little extra and partake in this local experience which is not a created experience this is a part of their daily life and uh, they celebrate everything with dance you know so a birth is celebrated with dance even at their funerals they dance so the fo dance form changes but it is a very inherent part of the culture and it needs to be celebrated for what it is uh moving on uh, there are different things that i do with students so uh, rather than just a safari i do these raft building exercises we do a lot of experiential things in the forest where you get to uh, you know actually experience what it is like to be in a forest city kids urban kids a lot of times don't have exposure to such activities swimming in a river you know building a raft on your own and you know paddling your way so there are safety precautions there are people like if you see even in the river there's a person standing on guard for the child on the raft uh, on even on the left and even on the right there is an escort so there are safety measures there and at the same time you get to you know try your hand at uh, you know experiencing the forest in its rawest form uh this is another thing that we do that we do group building activities this can be done with adults this can be done with children this can be done with any age group all you need is local uh, stuff which is locally available you don't try and create things that are not uh, there you use the local resources and do stuff uh like i said this is another example of the tribal dance that you know gives back to the community uh it not only provides them with a livelihood and reduces their dependence on forests uh it also helps you know bridge the gap between the urban and this so very interesting story about this particular image uh when i click this image uh it was the start of the night this was the first dance that they probably did uh for my group you can see my group is sitting in the background there uh by the end of the night so this went on for about 2 to 2 and a half hours by the end of the night uh the tempo starts increasing if you have experienced any sort of tribal dance you know it starts slow and then the rhythm keeps rising 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 so that is how it was with this group and towards the end uh, we came to the point where even the people had joined in and they were dancing 
and if you look at the age group general age group of the group i was traveling with all of them were senior citizens they were all above the age of 60 very few of them were younger so imagine uh, the impact tourism can have you know the music music can connect anybody i sincerely believe and this was one example where you know the beats make you dance get up and dance you might not understand the folk song going with it but you'll definitely move to the beat so this is something i advocate uh, then this is a village walk so this is a small village uh, outside uh, kana so uh, it is a heritage village it is made somewhere in the 1800s it's in shambles it's not a protected area it's not a world heritage site it's not a protected monument however uh, the frescoes on the walls the murtis the shape of the building it has been restored uh, recently but uh, there are so many still uh, things that are need to, to be explored with that village uh, this is uh, another thing that i love doing is artwork so when you are getting kids to understand about animals specifically you want them to care about animals they need to be able to connect with the animal and i feel the easiest way to do that is by drawing them so you get to hear them you get to see them and then you get to draw them so it connects you uh, very closely with the animal uh, then uh, looking at kana everybody thinks of only safaris nobody thinks of you know doing a cycling there it's a national highway you are allowed to cycle there is no permission required there is not much of a effort that goes into you know uh, making this happen all you need is safety gear for sure and a backup vehicle to you know make sure that you know in case of any emergency there is somebody to help you out so cycling is something that you know i love doing with my guests in kana uh, and lastly i think the most important thing that i love talking about is the uh, introduction to the forest department forest department is an integral part of conserving all protected areas all animals in india and uh, interactions with them are very very necessary for everybody to understand what the local challenges are it's very easy to uh, you know sit in pune mumbai delhi or bangalore and say save the tiger but uh, okay. only when you interact with people like this do you actually realize what it takes to save a tiger when you have to share a water body when you have to share a well or a stream uh, for water with a tiger and you have to live in those conditions in the harshest of rains the harshest of summers the harshest of winters and you have to walk on foot inside the forest where there are so many wild animals that is what it takes to save a tiger and when you interact with these people do you really understand what the challenges of wildlife conservation are and this has always been my attempt to you know make people understand what are the challenges it's very easy to you know just say save the species save that species or do facebook uh, put facebook posts and do photography of animals and say oh i am helping save the tiger a hashtag save the tiger with a tiger image does not really save the tiger this does so when you build bonds with the local forest community uh, you get involved with them you know their stories and you help them uh, slowly get connected with them and you help them uh, so you create that bond where you know kids and the forest department comes together that's where conservation truly starts taking place uh, this is another image uh, of what i was trying to show ki you know this is the kind of things the forest department does they are checking a water body for you know electric currents they are checking it for poisoning they are checking it for this a lot of wild animals use it but when you are walking like this on foot uh, if you can see none of them are armed they just have lathis so imagine you know encountering a tiger when you are out on a walk and usually the search uh, such parties are usually two or three in number they are not in such large groups and this happens in all tiger reserves in all wildlife sanctuaries across india so uh, this has been always my attempt and last is nature walks the very last thing that i you know recommend everybody to do is walk in nature when you are in nature a vehicle you know takes away from the experience of walking in the wild when you walk in the wild you are very very aware of your surroundings you hear everything you see everything and you smell everything when you are in a vehicle uh, you get distracted by the you know whether to look to the left or whether to look to the right and you easily uh, you know look over certain things that you could have actually seen so nature walks is a amazing way to you know get your interest going to understand uh, what the variety of biodiversity in the area is and that is how i look at wildlife tourism uh, uh, you know integrating so many different uh, stakeholders of the tourism industry so we look at the local community we look at um, the forest department we look at you know integrating different types of tourism uh you get adventure involved you get experiential learning involved you get wildlife ecology involved 
you can you know curate it in different ways so i can link it to archaeology i can link it to ecology i can link it to uh, even architecture so how things are created in the forest you can create it to geography geology uh, anthropology there are so many things even if it's a wildlife tour what i genuinely want to recommend and i think that has been our interest with soulful conversations to bring out uh the same idea that you know whenever you're traveling wherever you're traveling there's so many dimensions of the same travel that you can explore and it doesn't really take much all it just takes is a little bit of personal effort into it so deepi uh i would like you yes. to add something if you want to add something to this please yes absolutely uh so even uh, as we know as you guys know that uh, me and aniket share a lot of synergies into this concept of having a sustainable and responsible tourism so that is also my attempt uh, to take people to all these destinations uh, to let them know about the real heritage you know, take them to historical sites take them to archaeological sites uh, take them to villages take them to pl- uh, places where they can actually experience the uh, local culture So if they are going to Rajasthan, let them go to Rajasthan, stay in a homestay, uh, uh, try out local food. If possible, we can also arrange them some uh, to stay with a host family. Let them cook with them, have a food workshop, go to a particular village there where they do this uh, dress designing or jewelry making. Be uh, be with them, learn from them, and uh, you know when you are actually in that surrounding and in that village or in that community with those people, you understand it better. so you don't look at just as a art form where they are making a jewelry but then you try understand that what was the inspiration of uh, making that jewelry or what was the uh, geographical conditions or climatic conditions or what was the reason that they are using those particular patterns or what inspired them how how is uh, the whole uh, jewelry making or uh, embroidery or dressing style is influencing their uh, uh, way of life you know so it actually gives you a lot of insights not just about uh, that particular uh, destination but overall the entire uh, geography of that uh, place and it makes you more aware of what is happening around the world so i won't say that i'm just concentrating of india as well but i i feel that entire world has its own culture so you right. even if you go to us there is certain culture there are certain things that people uh you know follow uh, in us so we call it like the western modern uh, culture or uh, this thing but yes then why not learn about that modern culture also why not uh, look at what is happening around the world so it's not necessary that we have to just uh, look into the past and uh, speak about heritage but heritage uh, it's about everything heritage doesn't mean that it's only about uh, the small aspects or the rural aspects but heritage is about what is actually going on or where, what can be still the future heritage True. also is into what we think what the mythologies are what the belief system is and right. that will happen when we actually go and interact with the people and uh, you know try to learn so even if uh, i have plans that tomorrow if i want to go to japan why not i learn that language from here take a little elements of that language go to japan and understand that why do they speak that language so as we know india has several languages so probably even japan has so many languages so uh, i do have associations with a lot of tour guides with subject experts with language experts and on every uh, tour i uh, plan to have those people around which will tell you the authentic information of that place so tomorrow if you are going to japan i will make sure that there is a english to uh, japanese, japanese you know translator with you who will tell you about he won't just tell you that this is tokyo this is uh, what you have to go this is the restaurant but tell you about the culture so why right. certain uh, uh, destination is what it is today it is right. not just what the past was but what also the present is and what the future also look like so tomorrow you can go to singapore and not just go to singapore zoo or uh, go to the merlion or go to universal studios but if you look mm-hmm. at a futuristic way of singapore you can see that every single building in singapore is a green building so you right. can have a futuristic uh, approach to it that we can learn from something so it need not be that uh, it is a modern city so i want to show obviously i want to show True. you how the modern city is but i will show you how sustainable that modern city is absolutely yeah so that is my motive uh, 
uh, all about the soulful journey is that whenever you travel to a certain place you should have some focus about it you should have some history about it you should know and appreciate what the uh, place is all about so it can Absolutely. be in form of uh, as we say that architecture or heritage or food or dressing style it can be about the night life it can be about the party okay. life why not it, it is all it's all a part of a culture we cannot deny those facts you know so Absolutely. yeah so that is that is my whole motive that you go to a place and you learn everything about it don't leave any element about that place right uh himant i want to ask you a question uh, yeah, which yeah. bothers me uh, deeply as a tour organizer so when uh-huh. we travel uh, especially when we talk about indians when we travel abroad we are ready to pay 14 dollars for a pumpkin latte at starbucks but uh, <laughs> when i uh, but when i ask my uh, fellow travelers to come to a tribal village and have a thali with them of the authentic uh, local cuisine they usually shy out from shelling the same amount of money i'm not asking them to pay 14 dollars of course but uh, a comparable figure of what you would spend on a meal in the city whichever city you belong to uh, see um, i have noticed the same thing when i was in florence like uh, okay. indians come and they they enjoy they spend their money uh, they will have a luxurious tour uh, you know in brussels i met a family a indian family when okay. i was also in tour so these people are uh, they're also traveling from brussels to amsterdam and right. we are also traveling from brussels to amsterdam but we are as nomads uh, travelers right. and they are in a uh, you know so star packaged uh, travelers right. with a uh, very leisure travelers yeah luxury with uh, with a uh, individual uh, tour or uh, tour guide or tour escort whatever you call so right. they got their personalized escort who is uh, telling them what to do and what not to do and mm-hmm. how to do and how then we i asked them like where are you from then those, those people connected very easily because we all speak telugu they are also from hyderabad right when we asked like uh, have you visited so and so destinations in india and they said no then i realized you know they are taking pictures they are uh, they want to show you know um this is one thing you know not only indians most of the developing economies having the same impact they want to showcase like uh, in their instagram they want to showcase in their uh, facebooks where all they traveled and what they did and how rich they are right, right. absolutely yeah uh, luxurious like uh, these things are you know uh, yeah they i feel like uh, okay uh, this is their personal life and they need to enjoy in their way but you know it uh, uh, i feel this is not me because uh, i don't do tourism like that not only me uh, most of uh, my age people i mean your age people and uh, the younger generation they are, they are doing tourism in a different way you know um, i got uh, my friends from florence who are 6 7 years younger to me so we all go on a trekking tour we all go on different uh, you know jungle jungle walk or wild walk whatever you call like right. we we do in a different way and we never book any room we used to have our tents and you know that that is the different right. way you know you need to enjoy in a different way uh, yeah you can also showcase like uh, you will get more likes i, I am sure True. if you are staying in a five star hotel people most probably the decor will be the same but if you are living in a tent you, your decor will be different your uh, environment will be different and your experience your car, you know everything differs right. you know i i find like uh, this is my personal experience when i put my photograph with in a hotel and my photograph in a campsite i get right. i got more likes when i am in a campsite rather than in a hotel true true so people need to understand they will get more likes yeah and more luxury also they can spend little money and they can explore many many other things yes so they need to understand this i completely agree uh deepthi yeah. i think uh, do you agree with me when i say uh, that tour operators can play a major role in creating this influence where it uh, you know people are happy to pay the same amount uh, for a pyaas ki kheer in bundelkhand for what they pay for a gelato in let's say florence so i think uh, <laughs> tour operators can make and the way you sell it to the i think the way the, it's packaged and the way it's marketed to you i think it uh, makes a lot of difference and i think tour operators today have yeah. the ability to create this influence so yes uh, absolutely yeah. see it is like uh, so when we get an inquiry it is our duty to tell them that what is available and how it is available and as you said we have to package it differently 
So right. uh, we have to uh, let them know that uh, you know you you are going to eat that same gelato in India also, but you are not going to get that same fiasco uh, here right. in in Mumbai. So that right. is how we have to tell them. We have to orient them. I think uh, right. it just takes a couple of minutes to let them know that what is available at destination and how it can make a little bit of more experience rather than. or uh, you know just sticking off that i went to this destination i did this and uh, i did that no it should be more about uh, what they learn from it that's what i feel yes uh, no deepthi i am just a, a suggestion you know you should need to have a nice photo photo studio where they will Uh, yeah. with the background of uh, e filter with the background of uh, leaning tower of pisa and all those things you know <laughs> then people people will enjoy Right. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Because everyone want a photograph. Yeah. You know they are spending lakhs and lakhs of rupees for a photograph. That's what I feel. Yeah. But absolutely. Absolutely. I think it is more about. Uh, I mean, obviously, as uh, he himself was saying, him and that there are two categories. So one is that they want to do a lot of show off and show on the Instagram that we went here, and then there is another group of uh, people who are not. Uh, so instagram uh, i mean obviously everyone wants to be in instagram but they are not more uh, what do you call uh, cautious about it whether i will get likes or no but it is more about my own personal experience i mean i think we have to target the second audience that they want more experiences rather than the tick marks on their uh, to do list You know the second type of audience are mostly the FITs, free individual travelers. Yeah. So they're in, uh, you know, tour operators needs to catch hold of these kind of uh, people. Uh, you know, you need to make advertisements like that. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so I think uh, what I would like to uh, now move towards concluding a session is what I believe in all the soulful conversations that we have had with a lot of experts uh, during the last few uh, weeks. is that we uh, if anybody wants to look at how they want to explore an area better there will be lots and lots of ideas we have discussed agri tourism we have discussed photography we have uh, discussed religious tourism uh, so many different branches of tourism and to be very honest uh, i think me and dipti have created more competition for ourselves by giving out all these ideas for free for people yeah. to you know, kind of you know copy and very you know, bad edit. very bad <laughs> yeah but i think uh, if the tourism industry picks it up and if the more people do better tourism i think i'll be a happier individual uh, for the better of it uh, like i said uh, i think it's time to look inwards and you know uh, with vocal for local and you know all the in, uh, inbound tourism you know picking up i think uh, we need to look at marketing our own destinations in a better way packaging it better and actually first of all as tour operators researching i think yes. uh, we need to understand the locations better to understand better experiences to provide rather than doing the typical set itineraries and you know just keep repeating them uh, like you know a um, macd fast food there's only so many <laughs> times can you have a burger at macd so i think uh, that's where i think uh, i would look forward to uh, you know moving on from this uh, session of social conversations that you know people start exploring and traveling better and i think me and deepthi would be more than happy if you could travel with us i'm sure you yes. will have a better experience yes, uh, <laughs> than what most tour companies will provide you uh, i'm sure there will be better people than us as well because yes. uh, everybody knows their areas better so i'm sure uh, there will be a lot of experiences and we look forward to collaborating with more individuals who share this uh, ideological synergies with us we are looking Anikhil. forward to collab Yes, please. Uh, you know, Deepthi showed me Hyderabad. I never right. saw Hyderabad before. <laughs> I need to tell this. Uh, what, wow. Deepthi? Yes, yes, absolutely. I Do you remember? I did more research before going there, and I had given them a list that I want to do so and so things, and I want to eat so and so things. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah. So I think research is a must, must, must. Uh, when we speak of you oh. know organizing tours for people, we if yeah. we are the ones providing them with itineraries and ideas on what should be experienced, I think we need to know our game. You know, like yeah. if we want to be experts at it, we need to spend time. We need to invest a lot of time traveling ourselves to the destination, putting in that research, putting in uh, building the local contacts and local knowledge. to give more authentic more uh, sustainable experiences so to say 
rather than you know just doing the fast food tourism of checklists yeah so <laughs> with that i think uh, i'm very very happy that we are concluding uh, you know the first season of soulful conversations yes uh, i'm sure a lot of people have joined us on this journey and i hope that there will be more on the way ahead yeah what you deepthi yes thank you aniket and uh, when you're talking about tourism for being a tourism hardcore tourism student and even being a tourism student as well uh, we both uh, think that tourism uh, people should take up tourism more seriously people should take up more education uh, take up more professional courses in tourism find more uh, opportunities and prospects in uh, professionalism uh, of tourism industry and uh, it will uh, and that will help you know understand that industry in a better way and uh, manage that industry in a better way and also uh, make better entrepreneurs and make a uh, better destination of uh, management so right. yes education is definitely playing a very important role as it has played in our lives uh, of me and him and has been helping us develop our careers and i wish that more students can uh, also take tourism very seriously as any other professional course and uh, yeah right yes. uh, i would open up the floor for himant to share his insights on the whole uh, pandemic you situation know, and how tourism will be evolving here on you know and one one, one simple word a yeah. tourism can be done anywhere in the world you know uh, you can go to a next next uh, very close place to your city or in your city also you can explore some new things you know which we don't do so we need to start doing something exploring you know take a bus go somewhere go to go to the last stop of the bus and explore that area which we won't do we the people will think we are crazy but as a tourism student we need to explore our own location first then we can explore entire world like that so it will give you experience how to explore new things how to how to speak to new people how to interact these things are very important your uh, communication will improve like this and yeah your knowledge about the place is must absolutely yeah thank you that's what uh, i want to add <laughs> yeah that was a, a wonderful session i uh, really thank him and for join, joining us and giving his oh thank you deepu for inviting welcome for uh, so yeah thank you aniket for uh, being my partner in this uh, uh, series of soulful conversations and i'm sure we are looking forward for more such exciting uh, tours to be conducted for our people wow so, so more like, more yes you need to conduct more classes yes. maybe <laughs> maybe in a good way uh, you know you need to earn also as well i suggest yeah. all the time like this <laughs> yes definitely definitely yeah yeah yep. okay then give me a break thank you so much for inviting once again thank see you, you all you so much. thank you thank you so much hemant uh, it was brilliant to have you on the session it was wonderful to connect with more people who say you know share the same ideological uh, you know barriers and you know break those barriers and come together and share these ideas It was wonderful having you here, and thank you for mm -hmm. taking out your precious time. Oh, thank you so much for inviting. Actually, see you later. See yeah. you, Deepthi. Bye bye. Thanks, Thanks bye -bye. Iman. Yeah. Bye. So, guys, this was like four weeks, thirteen speakers, and unbelievable, enriching sessions on various aspects of tourism. So we went from rural cultures to wildlife to tribals to ancient civilizations from. adventures to photography to food uh, to bike expeditions and uh, and directly to the mount everest and i'm sure each one of us had an intriguing uh, trip through this incredible journey along with us and have turned uh, everyone into a explorer rather than just being a tourist and i think it has obviously changed our whole perspective about uh, travel as an industry as well as a major activity and made us more responsible and more aware of what is available in front of us in what we call as an heritage i would have a sincere like to give a sincere thanks from the bottom of the heart from myself and aniket and the entire team of soulful journey san aranya char to our eminent speakers uh, this entire soulful conversations would have not been possible without your support guidance and motivation 
and uh, we are really thankful that people like you are doing such a hard work and have been dedicated and been contributing towards the sustainable and responsible tourism and making traveling such an amazing experience. Uh, so also I would like to thank our dear viewers that uh, thank you for the wonderful response that you are, all have given us in all these uh, episodes. Uh, we had some amazing feedbacks which uh, obviously kept us motivated and we love to continue to uh, provide you with such wonderful and meaningful travel experiences as well as our future knowledge sessions. So uh, thank you once again to everyone. Thank you, Aniket. And uh, keep following us for further uh, updates on season two of Soulful Conversations. And uh, please feel free to comment, give us a feedback. And you can also send us a request if you want to hear you know, some uh, interesting topic or you want to invite some uh, special speaker on certain uh, uh, subject. Uh, and please let us know whatever you feel like and which destinations you travel want to travel or any new topic you want to learn. So guys, keep traveling, be safe, uh, be happy. And yeah, thank you once again. Yes. Thank you so much, Deepti. Uh, I would also like to take a quick moment to thank uh, the Soulful team, uh, Kartiki, Dhanush, and everybody involved. All the speakers like uh, Deepti already mentioned and to all of yours for taking out the time and joining us for sessions and you know helping us out with a lot of motivation along the way uh, we are very very happy to do this and we would be looking forward to many more collaborations with me be with institutes may it be with students may it be with travelers we are happy to share our stories and our insights into travel and looking forward to everybody having a great independence day today and a fantastic year ahead thank you everyone thank you everyone and goodbye Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.